Today you're going to learn how to do this animation in Geometry Nodes. You are going to learn how to make objects glow based in the distance with another object. So let's see it. So the other day I was watching this GIF. It's really cool and I was thinking, wow, I really like that. And then I was thinking, hey, I could do this in Geometry Nodes. Why don't try it? Then I tried it and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a tutorial. So that's the reason why I got the inspiration to do this tutorial. Now let's continue. Let's select everything and delete it. We are going to use a curve bezier. So later, if we want to change the shape, we already have the geometry of a curve. Now let's go to geometry nodes and let's create a new profile. And first of all, what I want to do is to add rings. So let's convert this to rings with instance on points. And let's select as instance curve cycles. Let's make it smaller and let's add more rings. I'm going to increase the resolution of the rings here. And to add more rings, let's add resample curve. So this is the number of the total rings. Now, what I want is to rotate these rings following the tangent of the curve, so the direction. To do this, what we're going to do is to use here a line Euler to vector. And to align this, because now all of them are perfectly aligned in this axis, and I don't want that. We need to use here in vector curve tangent. And really important, select G. So as you can see, right now is following the curve of this Bezier. Now what I want is to decrease this a bit, something like that, maybe. And let's add some mesh to these cycles. So let's add curve to mesh. I'm going to do a copy of this and connect it here and make it smaller, something like this. Perfect. Now let's add a material here because we are going to use a material to show this reaction with the proximity. So let's add set material and select a material. Now let's use an object to make this react. So for example, let's create a UV sphere. Let's make it smaller. And let's come back here, lock this panel, and let's bring this UV sphere here. So, object info, and let's select the UV sphere. Now, what we want is to get the distance between this UV sphere and the rings. So, what we need is to use a vector math and select distance. So, we are going to use the position of this UV sphere, and here we need to select the position of all the rings. So to do this, we are going to use the node position. And now this node is calculating the distance between this UV sphere and every position of every mesh of these objects. And with this, we are going to send it in the opal. So let's connect it here to create an attribute. So if we open this, you will see that here, when we connect this here, it appears output attribute. This is really important because we are going to use this information to send it to the shape editor. So let's add any word, for example, distance. And now I'm going to select the material view. So let's see if this works. I'm going to move this a bit here. Now it's not doing anything because we need to go to material. So let's open here a new tab. I'm going to leave this here. And let's go to shade editor. And select this material. I cannot see the material, so I'm going to select it here. Perfect. So now what we want is, for example, to call here attribute node. And this allows us to connect it with this attribute that we got from distance. So we need to write the same word, distance or any word that you created. And now this word is the attribute with information of the distance between the sphere and the rings. And we can use it, for example, I'm going to press N to hide this. We can use it to change, for example, this color, the base color. So if we connect it here, let's see if this works. I'm going to move the sphere you can see at least that something is happening. Perfect. Now, let's lock this panel, first of all, because I don't want to disappear. 
And what I want is, for example, to control the colors. So here I'm going to add a color ramp. And let's select, for example, another color just to see if this works. Actually, I'm going to select this color like in the GIF. Okay, we can see this color. And if I try to move the sphere, it changes the color. Perfect. Now, as you can see, everything is changing at the same time. So we don't want this. We want that every ring change the color. So we need to realize this instance because now we are working with instance. So this works like, for example, now it's getting black where it's really close. And if not, it's getting this color. So if we add here realize instance, as you can see now, we have more control. The only zone that is black is really close to this sphere. If you want to see better, I'm going to increase this. So now you can see it better here. And if I move this, you can see that this is reacting. Perfect. Now what I want is not to change this color. What I want is to make it glow. So I'm going to connect this in emission. Because what I want is to emit light. So I'm going to add, for example, one value. And now use this information here instead of the base color. So it's the same. To see it better, remember to select the render view. So now where it's really close is giving this value, zero. And the parts that are not really close is this color. So I want the opposite. So what I'm going to do is to flip these colors. And I'm going to push this. So now, as you can see, actually what I'm going to do is to make the background dark so we can see better. And if I move this, you can see that this is already reacting. By the way, I'm going to give a color to this sphere. If not, we are not going to see it. So let's add in the sphere a material and select white. And I'm going to hide this panel. OK, so now you know the base how to do this effect. Now, however, what I want is that this sphere follows the path of the curve, so I don't have to animate it manually. So to do this, what we have to do is to bring this sphere here. So we have it already here, perfect. But we need to sample this curve. I'm going to save this view just to see all the rings. So let me think one moment. First of all, what we have to do is to sample the curve to get the information of every position in the curve. So let's call sample curve. And here we need to connect it to this object. However, this object doesn't have an input for the position. So let's do a little trick. Let's call a point because a point have an input of position. And let's connect it here with join geometry. So now let's see this point where it is. Let's select this view. If not, we cannot see the point. You can see that we can move this point in any axis. And what we're going to do is to connect the position of the sample curve to the position of the point. So now it's at the beginning of the curve. And thanks to the factor, we can make this point follow all the curve. From 0 to 1. 1 is the end, 0 is the start. And the only thing we have to do now is to convert this point to this object with instance on points. So let's make a copy of this and bring it here and connect it as instance. And select relative. And let's hide this one. So the original sphere, let's hide it because we already have a copy inside geometry nodes. So now if we animate this, you can see that this is following the curve actually is not following because I did something wrong. I think what I did, let me check, is select relative, of course. That's because in relative, so the original object is not in the center. And if I try to move this, you will see that the other object is following this position. So what we can do is to press N and leave this in zero. 
So this copy will perfectly now follow this curve. Or what you can do if you want to move this is just to not select relative, original, and then just scale it here. And it's the same. So do whatever you want. I'm going to leave it like that. Now let's come back to this view and see if this works in render view. And if we move this, let me check, it doesn't work. Perfect. So that doesn't work because I was thinking why this doesn't work. And I know the reason because I forgot to change this because this is taking the position of the original object that is hidden. So if we don't move the original position, then this doesn't work. So let's delete this. And what we have to do is to, so let's select this and let's move it here. And in the input, of course, we need to connect this position because this one is the one that is changing the point. So we need to connect it here. If you want, I can do it in the other direction. So this is cleaner. And now it should work. Perfect. So to refresh, this is the master position that is changing the position of the point and that is being connected here to get the distance between this position, the point, the sphere, and every position of the other objects. So just animating this, we can create this effect. And the best part is that you now can change the curve in any moment. For example, you can do it here or in edit mode. I'm going to do it here first. For example, I'm going to create an spiral and let's go into here. And let me select this view just to see the rings. I want more rings, so let's increase this. And now let's see if this works. Yes, this is working. I'm going to hide all these lines. And if we animate this, you can see that it starts here and then it goes up. So you can add any curve that you want. By the way, I'm going to make this glow because it's not glowing. So here, let's increase this. And let's go to render and select blue. And for example, now let's add a cycle. So let's continue here. And let me see how many rings we have. Okay, we have too much. So let's decrease this, something like this. And I want to animate this. So let's go at the beginning, create a keyframe, and go to the end. And select one. And insert another keyframe. And I'm going to select the keyframes, press A, T, and select linear. So we have all the time the same velocity. And if we go here, and press spacebar, we have this animation. By the way, I think the animation is not linear because it starts slow, then fast, and then slow. If I'm not wrong. So I think I didn't click correctly. Let's click here. And now press A, T, linear. Yes. Now it changed because it wasn't linear. And now if I press spacebar, we can see that we can look this animation. So when we reach the end, we won't see any cut. If you want to make it faster, then we need to move this. Remember, this is the end of the animation. And for example, let's leave it in 100 and select 100. So it will go faster. And if you want more rings, then you can play here. Let me move this with the number of rings. If you want more, more. If you want less, less. And we can make the sphere bigger here. Not too much, something like this. And remember what I say that if you want, what we can do is to use 
instead of a curve here, you can delete it. I'm going to leave it here and use group input. And now we get back the Bezier. And now let's go here in edit mode. And you can press A, delete, and whatever you draw, we are going to get this pattern. Let's add more rings. If not, it's really boring. And let's see how it looks like. Now it's going too fast, but you get it there, right? You can draw whatever you want in any moment. Before we finish, I want to tell you some things at the end. I just prefer to add a curve cycle. But remember, you can use this and draw your own curve. And what I want to tell you is that, first of all, that here you can control a bit the range of the reaction. So now it's bigger or you can make it shorter if you want. By the way, I want to tell something really important that is not lighting all the ring at the same time. It's lighting the mesh of the rings that are closer. I don't really know how to do that every ring is being lighted all the mesh. It's really hard to do it only using this because this is using the position of every mesh of all these points that you are seeing. That's why we see this effect that when it's really close, there is some part that is being lighted first and after the others. This is one thing I want to tell you. And the other thing I want to say is that also you can add more colors here, of course. For example, click here and I don't know, let's select another color. Let's select this one. And here you can see that we can control different colors. So the ones that are closer is going to use this one. So if you want to play with different colors, try to add more colors or less. I'm going to leave only one color. And another thing I want to tell you is that if you want to have more control of the range, then we can add here a map range. Remember, a map range is to have more control, to create a new range of controls. And basically, don't worry, this is like the range. So leave this in zero and this in zero. And if you increase this, you are expanding the range of reaction. And if you decrease it, you make it shorter. And this that say zero and one is these colors. So think that this one is zero in the left and this one is one. You are saying when it's minimum, the distance, B0. Zero. zero means this color. That's why when the distance is minimum, we get this value. If you want to change this, if I select one, you are going to see everything black. Because what we are saying is that when the distance is minimum and maximum, give one and one. So black and black. That's why now it doesn't work. So this is the selection of the colors. And if you want to increase a bit all the others and not have perfectly black, then you can reduce this. And now we are not saying don't select this color. Select some color before one. So more or less now will be something like that. That's how it works. So you can play with the values of the factor to select your range of reaction of this effect. I'm going to leave it 0, 1, 0, 1. I hope you learned something new. I tried to give you some notes here. If you want to see it fast now, you can see it in this screen. So that's all for today. And if you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and you can do this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.